All right. Listen, we have a special guest today, Amelia. Um, Amelia has is fairly new at uh, in our membership, uh, our optimal EFT membership, and has been getting some exceptional experiences. She'll tell us about that. But has also ended up with a let's for the moment call it a negative. There's been some discomfort in her hand. So let me bring on an, an Amelia here. There you are. Say hello, Amelia. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's go over this for a second. So you, you I think you've been a, a member of our Optimal EFT course for maybe two months. Yeah, that sounds right. Okay. And you do, you're, you're, before coming to this, your primary therapy process that you use with people was cranial sacral therapy, correct? Yes, yes. All right. Now, just so everybody knows, I have, I've never done cranial sacral therapy. I don't even know what it is. I mean, I've heard mm -hmm. about it, heard good things about it, and so on. But I don't mm -hmm. really use it, nor have I experienced it myself. But you do it how long? How long have you been doing that? Maybe um, three or four years. Three or four years. Okay. Yeah. Now, you've been using unseen therapists in addition to cranial sacral therapy with the same client. Yes. And you've noticed some improved results. Could you talk about that a little bit? Yes. Um, so previously when I was doing cranial sacral therapy, it's mostly based on the anatomy. And I knew something was missing because I knew that there was a lot of emotional energy that was there that wasn't being addressed just through the physical touch. And so finding optimal EFT was really helpful because it, able, it allowed me to access these deeper emotions that were in the physiology that I was actually feeling with my hands. And um, it gave me a, a, a tool set, so to speak, to be able to go into these through this bigger awareness, this bigger presence. And okay. the releases that have been happening have been profound compared to my previous experiences. Well, I want to get to profound for a minute, but I'm going to back up for just a moment. I think I heard you say that you could... I'm paraphrasing. I don't remember the words, but you could feel the emotional unrest within your hands. Did you yeah. say that? Yeah. How do you feel that? Give me a sense of that. Um, so, for example, if there's like a sadness or a loneliness in my hands, it feels like a very like slow, deep, deep, empty energy. If there's a lot of anger, it feels very kinetic, very like everything's in motion, very high speed. Um, a lot of heat. Um, that that's that's kind of. I mean, it's it's feeling beyond touch, you know. Okay, so this experience with your hands was even there prior to using the unseen therapist. Am I correct? Yeah. Okay, so you would do it. N now. You're finding with the profound results we'll get to in a moment that. This, I want to make sure I understand it right. That this sensation you would get of the emotions, is it more than it used to be? Definitely more. Like, well, twice as much, 10% more? Uh, give me some sense of that, could you? Um, yeah, I'd say like 50% more. 50% more. Okay. Yeah. And is it like a tingling, a burning? Uh, uh, what is it? Mm. Yeah, I mean the sensations. It's it's more of a feeling through the hands. I don't. It's not necessarily a physical sensation at first. It was more like um, like I was actually able to like sense into these emotions through my own through my own emotional system. Okay, and is it is it painful? It wasn't painful um, until recently. Until after bringing in unseen therapist. Um, yes. Okay. So when you say painful, like like really bad pain, you got to go to, you know, you got to stop doing it for weeks on end, and it just gets gets very bad, or just has some it discomfort, just, or 
Yeah, it's just in the session. So, for example, when I was doing a session with one client last week, um, just, you know, holding that bigger awareness, that bigger space for the unseen, unseen, unseen therapist to do its work uh -huh. and, and really kind of getting out of the way, there was starting to happen this in the client I was feeling in their body, this like density. And I was also feeling it in my hands, a, a really intense, almost like gravitational pull, but like almost like a black hole. And so my hands started to, to contract and to go into like extreme pain. And I would, I would stay with the pain as long as I could, but I knew that I, if I stayed with it too long, I might like pass out because it was so painful. Oh, that kind of pain. But it yeah. happens. It happens at the moment with the client, not necessarily an hour later. It's in the moment. It goes away just as fast. Okay. Well, I want to explore that some with you, if I may. Yeah. I'm going to give you my intuition first, but just because my intuition says something doesn't mean it's accurate. So you need to always correct me because I, I don't. I'm not experiencing what you experience. I've never had that kind of thing, for example. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I, just, just so you know, and so listeners know, um, there are times when people will tune into, you know, really uh, dramatic, specific events, dramatic, traumatic memories, you know, and they'll, the, the therapist will pick up some of the client's stuff. It's called, empathy is an empathic person kind of thing okay so it's not totally unusual but what i'm what i'm getting here is that you're used to having some kind of sensation now now you're bringing an unseen therapist i'm getting a sense you're getting even a bigger release from the client and that is what's showing up in your hands now do i am i on target or or, or not yes yes Oh, okay. So the, the, as far as you can tell anyway, the pain in your hands is coming from the fact that the client is releasing bigger time. I think part of it is that, and, and part of it is that the more I get out of the way, the more painful it seems to be. And I think there's a subtle disconnect happening where I feel separate from that energy all right we t we talked a little bit before this recording and i want to get into that a little bit you feel separate from that energy and that separation contributes to the increased pain in the hands did i say it I right think, i think so yeah all right well Okay, from reading my book, The Unseen Therapist, and, and, and this is the foundation to whatever our optimal EFT, Unseen Therapist, is all about. We keep talking about the idea that our true reality is a oneness that we aren't aware of. We believe we are separate from each other. That is not really the case. It's an illusion, and all this has been backed up by our scientists and quantum physics and, and all of that. So you are, you are thinking that it, all, all of us, by the way, um, uh, experience this sense of separation. We're not aware of the oneness, typically. Okay, We're, we're, we're making ourselves more aware by our course, but <laughs> typically we're not, not aware of that. But you are thinking, you're, are you becoming more aware of the separation as a result of this? I, I, I'm... I'm Put some more words around it. I think I'm becoming more aware of the subtlety of the separation that I had always been feeling. So I, I studied Reiki, for example. And in mm -hmm. Reiki, you're channeling a, a higher energy. But it was always an energy coming through me. And therefore, me and that energy have subtly been separate in my, in my belief system. Mm -hmm. And so what is what is coming to a head here is that the subtlety of that belief of that separation between this unseen therapist and I is creating the pain. It's it's very subtle. But it's it's that subtlety that that is creating the dissonance. 
All right. And is that dissonance you're thinking is a contributor to the excess pain in your hands? I think so. Yeah. Okay. Well, could well be. And, we, and I don't think we really know for sure because sometimes we have to sort of guess about what we think is going to, is happening. Yeah. I'm thinking, I'm thinking um, that you're doing your work. You're bringing in unseen therapists. This is a more powerful addition to what you've been doing. Clan is releasing more. You're you're all you were picking up in the hands before what's going on, but now here's more. Okay. And I'm I'm thinking that's just more of the same kind. Of, that's my thought. I'm thinking of doing this, and you tell me if this fits for you. That you and I do an unseen therapist session. This will be a little uh, different kind of session than we usually do, because we won't be aiming at a specific event. We'll be aiming at basically the symptom of you getting all this charge that you don't really want. And it's not really necessary for you to have it, is it? No. <laughs> <laughs> I never get it, by the way, and I get great results with people. So I never get any of that. I don't even get the beginning. In fact, in a way, Amelia, I'm sort of jealous of you because you can with your hands start, oh, picking up some stuff. It's a way for you to start measuring what's going on with the client. Would I be right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, okay. So are you okay with you, you and I doing a little session here with Unseen Therapist? Definitely. Let me, um, let me poke around a little bit first if I can. Is it possible for you? So I, I'm looking for a, like a before that we can measure somehow. So is it possible for you to like, close your eyes and go back and imagine a thing where your hands really hurt badly and actually yeah. as a result, have your hands hurt bad. You can do yeah, that. Definitely. Yeah. I can oh. do that. Yeah. Well, wait, 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 wait. I don't want to put you through anything unnecessarily intense. Okay. So give me your best estimate. If you were to do that, do you think your hands would get to what number do you think your hands would get to in, in pain wise? Zero, zero to 10. As much as I want it to, I can I can take it to a seven maybe. Oh, okay, well that gives us a way to measure because now we're going to go do this thing and then I'm going to have you, you know, go in and see what you can get it to, and it, we'll see if that measure improves. Okay. All right. So to begin with, is a seven. All right. Um, w w when you said you could probably get it to a seven, I mean I could get it beyond that. <laughs> Okay. Well, okay. Yeah. I'll put down seven plus. Okay. Yeah. Were you thinking of a very specific client you deal with? Yeah, I can do it. Yeah. A specific well, client that just happened last week. Yeah. Is that what you were thinking when I, when I was asking you if you could imagine yourself into a seven plus? Yes. It was that particular client. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, let's just do our session, see what happens. Okay. okay. So I, I'll narrate the whole thing for you. It'd be easy for you to follow along. Uh, I, I must tell you up front, I, I'm not sure what we're going to do because I just sort of go along with what I'm, whatever I'm guided to do. So we'll see. Sounds good. Yeah. All right. So if you would, Amelia, just close your eyes, you know, take a nice, deep, re relaxing breath. And as you're used to doing now with our personal peace procedure, just recall a simple little loving moment in your life and nod your head whenever you're there. All right, good. That's just this, for newcomers looking in, that's just simple, a simple invitation to the unseen therapist. She's always here, by the way. She's within us. She's always guiding us. We just aren't always listening. Right? So... We are, now, we are now aligning ourselves as best we can with the pure love of the unseen therapist, the pure healing love, etc. And so now we're going to shift our focus back to this client that you were imagining where you could get to maybe a seven plus if you really got into it in your imagination. Really re-ran that movie, if you will, with that client. And um, 
unseen therapist is is watching. She knows all all along what's going on. She knows that this is some form of a communication between you and your client, but she also knows you don't have to have all that pain. Okay, for some reason or other, your system has said, "Well, I got to have that pain." Right? And unseen therapist saying, "No, you can get the job done." Other people don't have that pain. You have a very special talent, but there's no reason for you to have pain with it. So what we're going to do in our imagine in your imagination is you're going to imagine yourself here with this particular client. And here comes the pain, but I don't necessarily want you to feel the feel the pain physically at the moment. Just imagine here comes the pain. And we're going to represent it metaphorically as a, uh, I'll use a different metaphor than usual here, as a throbbing red ball. It's red, it's painful, boom, 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 like that. Size of a basketball and it's kind of floating there in front of you. We're just going to represent that painful response as that throbbing red ball. Also in our imagination, we're going to imagine the unseen therapist seeing that red ball, recognizing the pain doesn't need to be there. The connection with you and your client, sure. After all, we are all one. An unseen therapist would like to have us recognize that. Okay. So she sends a nice, in your imagination, a nice, gentle healing breeze towards this basketball-sized red throbbing ball. And that beautiful envelope of love circulates around the, the ball. And with all that pure love, this, this ball, this, all this negative, painful stuff can't really survive in all that love. And so in your imagination, you're going to imagine now the throbbing red ball under the power of all this healing, peaceful love starts to change color. It goes from red to flesh color to transparency. The throb, the boom, boom, boom goes boom, 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 boom. And as that fades, the size of the ball, you can imagine fades. Basketball to baseball to golf ball to BB to nothing. And now in our imagination, we're going to do that again. The pain in the hands from this one particular client and their release. Ah, the release is still there. Do we need the pain, the throbbing red ball, the, the healing breeze? Boom, 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 boom. Change in color, change in size, disappear. Right. And now, Amelia, if you would just take whatever time you want, and we have all the time you want, repeat that again, and maybe again, or whatever, however many times that you wish, until you think you have completed it. You've gone as far as you can go. And by the way, there are no grades here. You don't get an A or a C. Or it's just whatever happens, happens. So relax about it. But again, the pain represented by the boom, boom, boom ball. You know, the red fading, size fading, boom, fading under the loving breeze. Go ahead, repeat that at a time or wherever, wherever you want. And just open your eyes whenever you're gone as far as you can go.
Okay. So let me tell you, let me ask you, as you were doing that, and as I was talking and so on, uh, were you having any competition, any competing thoughts or resistance, other things come up? What happened? Um, just, just like I kind of went down a tunnel of fear. You went down a tunnel of fear. Mm -hmm. That's interesting because we never even talked about fear here. Mm -hmm. So tell me about the tunnel of fear. Mm, it just it just kind of came up when when we were talking about that um, that light that throbbing red light, and then I started feeling this um, fear almost in my solar plexus. And what happened with the fear? Did it fade, or is it still there? Or it's still there. Yeah. It's, it's much less, but it's still there. Oh, see, that's interesting because it, my way of thinking, but you tell me if, if you don't think this is correct, is that while we're in there, unseen therapist is giving you the message. There's a fear-based item in here someplace. Yeah. Um, and so th that is another, that's one of the real advantages of unseen therapists. We get all these clues. Okay. Now we're going to test in a minute some other stuff, but I want to ask about this fear thing. At no time did you, anywhere in our conversation, when you were talking about the clients and the hands and releases and all of that, did we ever talk about fear? Do you think this fear is yours or that of the clients? It's mine. It's yours. Okay. Um, now I, this could get into things that are more personal you want to get into, and maybe we could do some other time. But would that fear come from your own past, your own childhood, your own unresolved things? I think it's a, a more existential fear. Meaning what? Um, it feels, at least in the beginning, like the fear of not being. The fear of not being. As in not being one or not being at all? Not being at all. Oh. Is that a new fear to you or one you've kicked around with before? Oh, I've had it for a long time. Oh, okay. All right. Well, we're talking now about another level of things uh, that we is probably going to go beyond the scope of today. But what I'd like to do for the moment is, is to, I want to test how well we did, if at all, with the seven plus in your hands that you were, you might have gotten from your client and imagining it. Can you now go test that? Imagine that client. Imagine all that stuff and tell me if you still get to a seven plus. No. Do you get to anything? Maybe like a three. All right. Well... If you're comfortable, Amelia, see, I'm a great one for testing. I never want to be fooled by a temporary result, okay? So um, if you would close your eyes and really get into it, I mean, exaggerate it, really try to get your hands past this, you know, seven plus or whatever, and tell me if it's still a three. Yeah. 
Yeah, what? It's it's a three. It's still a three. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Open the eyes, please. Okay. So what we did there was not. Well, here, I, I've got to ask you another question. As best as you can tell, Amelia, what makes it a three? Better stated, what's not done yet that makes it a three? Mm, the fear. The fear. Okay. If you would now, okay, I want to make sure we're clear on something. I thought when you were going and imagining all of this, that you would be assessing the pain in your hands being a seven plus, but now I, I think I heard you said it was a, the pain in your hands was a three. Am I correct on that? Or your pain in the hands is zero, but you've got another fear. No, it's, it's a three. The pain in your hands is a three. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is that a pain or is that a discovery? Is that down to the level that it used to be or still above the level that used to be before unseen therapists? It's still, it's still above. Yeah. Is still above. Okay. So with this, we went from a seven to a three. We've got more to do, apparently. That was a question. Um, yes, I guess. Yes. Okay. All right. Great. Um, we could, we could, if you wanted to do another little round with unseen therapists now to see what we can do about the three. Do you want to do that? Yeah. All right. All right. Let's do it. Let's do it. So go ahead. Close the eyes. Unseen therapist is already here. We need not go through all of that at this point. Um, but we're left with a what we think is a three in your hands, which may be fear-based. Seems that way from our conversation so far. But a fear of not even being. So with unseen therapist present, we're going to use a little different metaphor still. Imagine yourself, Amelia, standing on the shores of a lake. It's a lake of not water, but love. It's the unseen therapist's lake. All right. You could, you could wade into a lake of water and drown, but not here. You could wade into this lake, and the more you wade in and the more you get immersed, the more supportive everything is because it's all pure love and it's you accepting the love more and more and more as you wade into it deeper and deeper and deeper. So you're standing on the side, on the shore, wanting to go into the lake, but knowing I've got some fear, fear of not even being. There's even pain in my hands that may be related to that fear as I relate to a particular client or other clients as well. So with that fear, we're going to make the assumption that the fear comes from a number of specific events that you've had in your life, childhood on up, and so on. And we're going to just imagine those various fear events various contributors to the overall fear of not even existing okay. as unwanted insects on your body. Okay. And as you wade into the lake, up to your ankles, to your knees, to your waist, to your chest, these various insects can't survive and all of that. It's just all fear. It's just all fear, but it's just f fictional fears. This is love. This is your reality. And so they can't survive and they just sort of die off. They fade off as you walk further into the lake, up to your chin, your eyes, above your head, and find yourself completely immersed in love. And all the insects just sort of fade away and while you're there in the complete loving arms of the unseen therapist lake of love spend a few moments take whatever time you want amelia and walk around within the lake 
and look for things you may have ingested or think, things you may have come in contact with, imagined or whatever, that brings up this fear. And look at them. Maybe they are people, maybe they are events, maybe whatever they are. And imagine them fading, being gentle. If they're people, they smile. Softer, softer. Ah, fear fades, fear fades. Take your time doing this. And whenever you're done, just open your eyes and we'll talk. Okay. So what went on in there? What happened? So it went it went from fear of not being into a sadness. Um a sadness of not being. And then it went into like a deeper question of who would I be if I, if I didn't exist. And then it just continued to infinitely deepen. And it's just very quiet. The question, who would I be if I didn't exist? That's a strange question because you, you couldn't even ask the question unless you did exist, okay? But I'm wondering when you say, are you equating existence with the body? No. Oh, okay. 
close your eyes for a minute. I'm, I'm going to, if I could, attest again. And that would be to go back to the pain in your hands, that particular client. Tell me if that's still a three. Mm -mm. What would you estimate? I don't, I don't feel pain. Well, I'm going to test again. Okay. Take a little more time if we could. Exaggerate the sights, the sounds, the feelings. Literally try to get your hands, have pain in your hands, and tell me how you do. No pain. No pain. All right, good. Well, all right. So let's kind of summarize a little bit. Um, first of all, I want to state again, I never want to be fooled by a temporary result. Okay, although this seems like we did something really worthwhile here. You'll want to test it again tomorrow. The next time you see a client, you know, and they have a release, that's a, that's a better test still as to what happens with your hands, right? Okay, so those are the best tests. So you want to always keep testing. But what we want to do when we test is the chances are really high with the unseen therapist that what we actually dealt with, what we put on the table for her, we got a good job done. Okay, what tend to, what 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 will likely come up and this just make you aware of this if you get some intensity in your hands when you imagine it and test it in future times is. What is causing that? And the chances are it'll be something different than what you and I are dealing with here. Maybe some guilt will come up. I'm, I'm guessing, okay? Or, 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 or some grief or, or some, some angers or resentments or something like that would show up, okay? And that's just a pointer to you. There's more to be done. Mm -hmm. Rather than it didn't work. Very important distinction. Very important distinction. Okay. All right. Anything else you want to go over uh, while we're here? I'm just very grateful for you and your work. Oh, all right. Well, thank you. Thank you. I want to, I want to remind, you know, any listeners here uh, to see the, you know, the essential links below, you know, to the free ebook and our training and, and our free support and all of that. So do that. In the meantime, I thank you very, very much, Amelia. Um, thank you. And sayonara to everybody. All right. Hold okay, on a thanks. second.